good afternoon. Um, my name is Tamsin. Um, I'm from a little non-profit organisation based out in a minor school in South African Shark Conservancy. Um, and he's talking now kind of overwhelmed me because I'm going to go through what I plan to do this year and I'm like, there's probably no way I'm going to do it. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> realistically. Um, so what we started doing um, in, we started working with recreational anglers. In 2010, the South African Shore Angling Association approached SASC, um, that's short for South African Shark Conservancy, um, with some concerns which I'll go into in a moment. But just a bit of background about um, SASA. SASA is the umbrella body for organized angling in South Africa, or the shore-based angling. Um, there are, as you can see, approximately 3,000 registered anglers from the seven provinces in, well, seven provinces in South Africa. They compete in about 10 local competitions per province. So in Western Cape, there'll be 10. Uh, KZN will be 10, so that's about 70 um, competitions throughout this, this, uh, South Africa. And then from those competitions, they'll go into the best of those people will compete against each other um, in national and international competitions. <coughs> Sorry. So these guys, they obviously target edible fish. Um, edible fish um, accrue more points for them than ed in edibles or elasma brands. But obviously with the state of the fish stocks, more and more um, elasma brands are, are targeted. So just for a bit of a, an idea, <coughs> these are the catch totals for Western Province for this for this year. So 20, ton, 20 tons of, of fish, sharks, skates and rays were caught. 2,400 individuals. I felt I had to put that in because if you look at 20 tons, it might not sound like that much really, but if you're thinking of guitar fish that are just 3 kilos, it's, it's quite a lot of fish. Um, out of that was 227 of them were Elasma banks. So only 180 or so were fish, so that's 92 and a half percent of their catch is sharks. Okay, so their concerns when it came to SAS, they um, said to us, we've noticed over the last decade or so, we've had changes in our catch composition, we're not seeing the species that we used to see, and we're finding different species. Obviously, a lot of the, they're complaining a lot of the fish that they're catching are smaller, they're not getting the, the big sharks and the big fish that they used to catch. Have having to fish for a much longer time to get the fish that they used to get. And then, as most people, the um, monitoring and compliance by DAF, they feel like we're an organized angling community, we, do, we, we stick within the limits and that kind of thing, but they're noticing um, just the, the weekend, as they call them, that there's a lot of um, un, um, non compliance. And then they want to be, because they, they feel like they're doing the right thing, um, they're obeying the law, they'd like to be have more consideration when it comes to management decisions. Um, these guys target the same species as inshore commercial fishers. There's a, a, a complete overlap with species. So they feel like the, the, the recreational fishermen are very quick to say the commercials are wiping out all the fish. The commercials are quick to say the recreational guys are doing it. So we look at the, the catch and release of shark skates and rays because all with, with, within SARS competitions it's all catch and release. Um, these guys are saying, we're catching, we're releasing, these sharks are fine, but if you look at these pictures, sometimes probably not so fine. So we want to know what the uh, post-release um, mortality of these sharks are. And we thought to ourselves, well, what are these anglers, what are they doing? What do they know? What, they, what, is that? what are their perceptions? And how are they behaving? Again, some not very nice pictures there. And so to find this out, we did a survey of 150 anglers, just asking their, um, their, their knowledge, their attitudes, and the behavior. Um, from this survey, we developed the Responsible Angling Clinic, um, rolled out last September. It was very well received by the anglers. Um, there will be more of them coming up this year. So those are the topics covered in the, in the um, angling clinic. We only had about 40 people at the clinic. Um, it's very difficult. Obviously, you have to do it out of season, out of angling season, which is um, angling season is from September to April. So you want to do it in winter when there's not competitions all the time. But then also you try to get the guys out of their, their house and away from their wives who aren't, aren't very happy with them. Um, but there has been quite a lot of interest shown in, in further um, clinics which will roll out this year. So we went through just basic biology, obviously uh, ethical tackle choices. So you want to encourage cervical barbless hooks. 
um, heavier tackle rather than light tackle to reduce fight time, um, good hand, ha handling and angling techniques, uh, also again reducing fight times, no picking up um, skates and raised by their spiracles, no gaffing, that kind of thing. Species ID was quite interesting, so I put up some sli slides just asking like, is this a bull ray or an eagle ray or is this a duck bull? And it was pretty interesting some of the answers, so we developed these species cards which are now on their website and available for any of them to take. And then <clears throat> along with Stuart at RE, with a lot of correspondence with him, we kind of went through their manual and trained them how to tag and then gave them the information on how to, to register with RE. So all those guys are now tagging and adding scientific data as well. So attending again now with the post release mentality um, side of things, <coughs> we have been t attending competitions at SASA well, competitions since 2010. Um, when we first started, for 2010 we kind of formed a relationship with them. We were, we were there, we were tagging some fishermen, we were tagging, we were marshalling for them, so helping them as well, making sure that they're, we're not there just taking all the time. Um, so we were collecting those various things while we were there. Um, but then when we received funding in 2012, we started collecting angling data as well. So this way now we know if we get a recapture, we have um, angling data to correlate it to, we know how long the animal fought for, where the hook was located, and that type of thing. Um, the angler experience, we've just been writing down their angler number, so, well, they're, they're starting numbers, so you can go back and um, reflectively see how long they've been angling for. Uh, Octetetracycline, uh, because we're using Charlene de Silva's tags from the Department of Fisheries, um, we're injecting octetetracycline just in case um, the end of the sharks are recaptured by commercial fishermen and they actually keep the vertebrae for us that can be used by students for age validation. And then genetics, we basically, like Abby said, it's also considering collecting everything we can all the time. But it's actually proved all right because now the genetics went to SEMO, the fin clips, and that's showing um, some nice results. Uh, this upcoming season, we're hoping to do lactate analysis um, for stress response. And then we're also looking into acoustic telemetry, but again, it's very costly. Um, so, and also, obviously, the stress is induced by inserting tags and that kind of thing is also a consideration and funds always. So, these are the areas that we have been uh, tagging at since 2010. There's seven different areas. Um, a lot of the areas, like Falls Bay, obviously, it's, we're from the Western Cape, we spent a lot of time there. So there's seven different sites, um, 20 tournaments. Since 2010, I think it was 10 this last season, so now with funding, we've been able to go to more competitions. Um, the 583 tag shot is from, since 2010, this last season with angling diet is 186, from 18 species, um, only 15 species with with tag data. We've had six recaptures, which has been quite exciting. Last year we had three recaptures of bronze whalers, unfortunately also by commercial fishermen. And then interestingly, this season at um, Stray Spa, we got recaptures of guitar fish. And I was convinced that these guys were dying, like, like all time. We had um, one that was uh, tagged a year to the day and recaptured the same day of the same, uh, in the same place and then two small guitar fish that were caught a few days later. So I'm hoping now, next season, we'll start seeing the captures from tags in this season, which is pretty cool. Then, um, um, a, big, a big aspect of this project is outreach and awareness. So we take the Redfish project when we go to um, competitions. A lot of the SARS the SARS constitution states that they must do outreach um, and development for their sport. So you see here we have a, um, a chance to chat to the kids beforehand. They'll often get a group of underprivileged school children um, on the last day of fishing, give them all rods, show them how much fun it is, rather the, um, what is their slogan, choose drugs, fishing not drugs, or something like that. So <laughs> <laughs> we're there as well um, to tag and show them what happens there, and the kids obviously, they, they love it. Um, I think we reached about 3,000 people this year, outreach wise and obviously various presentations all around. So here's what I'm stressing about now, thanks Ali. <laughs> <laughs> the 2013, this is the winter kind of, well, starting at the top, it's the winter work, which I hate. Um, we're just about done with, well, the design of the social economic study is done, it's come back from review, 
I've got to make the changes, which keep getting put off the back burner as things happen. Um, but that should go out within the next, I'd say, two months, hopefully. Um, we'll be doing that online and then giving it to the club anglers as well. Basically, what we've said to them is, if we want to go and try and get you guys more say in management, perhaps we need to show how much your fishery is worth. Um, side so to the Deep Sea Angling Association, commissioned a survey in 2007, and they said that recreational fishing in South Africa is 18.8 billion rand per annum. It's kind of questionable. A lot of people have, have, have said that it's not true. Um, so we'll have to check it out from, from this survey. If anybody's really good at Afrikaans, I'm looking for someone to translate into Afrikaans for me. <laughs> um, then we'll go have a look at the size class changes, the desktop study, just species comp changes. And as I said, rolling out the angling clinics, hopefully going up to KZN this year as well with that. And then the blood lactate analysis. We've got a student who's coming to SASC in a few weeks. Um, she'll be looking at the captive sharks, the endemic sharks, um, with the lactate pro, and then we'll take them to the field this season as well. And that is it. Short and sweet.